In Deer Park, Washington, north of Spokane, you can find small groups of apple trees. Locals harvest this fruit each fall without giving much thought to how it got here. But one resident, Peter Coffin, is on a quest to find out. Peter is a member of the Clayton Deer Park Historical Society, and he's working to tell the story of a century-old business venture called Arcadia Orchards. The society, of course, is interested in all aspects of the local history, and so the Arcadia Orchards, to me, provided a, a reason to look at something that is no longer here. There are still pitiful remnants of the orchard, but those are artifacts of a very large orchard operation and uh, in some ways kind of invisible. You go down the road and see this large concrete structure, well, what is it? Well, it's part of the old Arcadia orchards. And people, I don't think, realize that there was such an effort here in the town. The Arcadia Orchards project was begun in 1906 by Spokane Mayor Floyd Daggett and his brother-in-law, John McIntyre. They were buying up land in the Deer Park area for about 50 cents an acre with the scheme of creating a large orchard area with trees and irrigation all installed and selling smaller tracts to people who wanted to buy land or buy small tracts of land. Land sales were brisk. In fact, they were overwhelming. Soon, Daggett and McIntyre needed to buy additional land for their project, so they borrowed several hundred thousand dollars from a Spokane firm called Netherlands American Mortgage Company. Netherlands American had been involved in financing buildings after the 1889 fire in Spokane and had held on through the panic of 1893 and had done very well. And so they were, I guess, open for more speculative ventures. In 1911, Arcadia produced a promotional film to show to prospective buyers in Chicago, New York, and other cities. The film features a trolley ride through downtown Spokane, beginning at Monroe Street and heading east along bustling Riverside Avenue. Movies were novelties in those days, and this one helped to draw even more buyers to Arcadia. The film also shows how clear-cut terrain was turned into orchard-ready acreage. Arcadia finished its development by constructing a massive, gravity-fed irrigation system using water from Loon Lake. And they had this railroad trip out here to have the opening of Loon Lake irrigation water into the irrigation system. Customers in the U.S., Canada, and Europe bought some 18,000 acres. Roughly half of that land actually became orchards. However, Arcadia managers were not up to the task of operating such a large business venture. By 1914 and the beginning of World War I, the orchards began experiencing financial problems. There was stiff competition from large, established orchards in Washington State. And that wasn't all. The climate in Deer Park isn't really conducive to growing apples in great quantities. It's very cold here and it freezes. And that slowed them down in the war years to where they didn't have very good crops. Crops did better in the next few years, but railroads were still being used in the war effort. So apple growers had a hard time shipping their products by rail. They also were affected by the post-war recession. Always after a war, you kind of have things go down. And by the 1920s, people were having trouble paying for their tracks, and there was a great number of foreclosure notices. The Arcadia Orchard business venture came to an end in 1925. But the name Arcadia still endures and can be found in street and school names in Deer Park. The only physical evidence of Arcadia orchards are a few scattered groups of apple trees and the concrete fragments of the old irrigation system. But these artifacts harken back to a time when the Clayton Deer Park area was home to a large-scale business enterprise. Well, at the time, I think it was positive because they were selling apples. They were employing people. They would employ, I rather imagine, seasonal laborers to some extent because you had to have the work in the spring, the work on the, the irrigation uh, in 1908 to 1910, along in 1911 on the irrigation system would require a lot of workers, and then in the fall you'd have pickers. So there was a positive uh, influx of money. And thanks to local historians like Peter Coffin, 
Arcadia Orchards will continue to be remembered. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.